Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. And welcome to today. <laughs> I'm going to talk about our preconceptions of people and how societal beliefs colour our interpretation of who people are. Now, I've had, <laughs> I would say I've been blessed, <laughs> but actually it hasn't always been a blessing, with um, a fairly, I suppose, posh accent. I don't really know where it comes from. My family isn't posh. And um, I'm just one of those people whose accent doesn't change. Even though I've lived most of my life in Africa, um, I still have a very English accent. And the reason I say it's been a blessing and a curse was when I lived up in the Lake District for six years, um, I was actually badly bullied because of my accent. Um, because also I'd just come from South Africa. And in South Africa, the slang for yes is ya. Yeah. So <laughs> I went to the north of England with my posh accent saying ya. Yeah. And um, for any of those that know the English um, language, well, the English accents and things like that, it sounded incredibly stuck up, which wasn't really the case. But anyway, um, my accent has also gotten me jobs. Um, people assume that I'm more well to do than maybe I am. But they assume a lot. I suppose it's not about being more well-to-do than I am or anything like that. What I'm trying to say is that my accent creates assumptions in people. They assume things about me because of the way that I speak. Some of those things might be true, but some of them most definitely aren't. And I've realised because of that how we make assumptions of people. Um, I've been fortunate, I think, in my life to live in many, many different situations. Um, I've lived on the Cape Flats in South Africa, which is um, a very poor area in Cape Town and one that a lot of people avoid because it's known for its violence, um, it's known for its poverty, desperation I guess. Um, I lived there for a year and I loved my neighbours. My neighbours were the most amazing people. They were loyal, they were kind. They were protective. Um, I never for a moment felt vulnerable from any of them. And so I know that the perceptions that we have of places, of people, of people that come from places is very misplaced. Um, I've also been to um, a private school in South Africa when I lived there, but I've also been to, um, I always get it wrong in England. <laughs> because public school means private school here. and. Um, basically a government school in the UK when I when I came over here. Um, and so I, I guess I've experienced many different things. I've lived on a council estate in England. Um, I have lived in mansions in Southern Africa. So I have a very varied experience of life. And I'm saying all of this because, as I've said, we have assumptions, assumptions about people, about the colour of their skin and who they are if their skin is a certain colour. We have assumptions about people by the accents that they have, by the education they have. We assume that people that have gone to university and got a degree are cleverer than people that haven't. Um, we assume that we make assumptions about women and men and sexual orientation. There are so many assumptions that we make of people and I suppose the reason for today's episode is just to sort of highlight those assumptions and to make you register and realise them. In the UK, there's a hierarchy. Um, there's sort of the royals and the sort of the blue bloods and the nobility and lords and ladies and things. And then there's your sort of affluent middle classes and then there's your working classes. Um, and then in years gone past, there would have been your peasants. And in England, very much there still is a hierarchy it's still very evident. Um, I'm not sure if people who live here notice it so much, um, but coming from living in Africa where there didn't seem to be hierarchy at all, maybe a racial hierarchy, but there wasn't um, hierarchy in the sense that there is in the UK. And that for me was really interesting because to me, we're all just people. You know, we all have blood that runs through our veins. We all have hearts that pump it. We all have brains. We all have legs and arms. And, you know, we all work in the same way. We all breathe oxygen to survive. We all need food. 
we all <laughs> we all do all sorts of things that is the same through every single one of us and and as i said and yet we make all these assumptions and i know that it's not going to be something that overnight you drop your assumptions but by being aware of your assumptions it's a start because when you start thinking about people in a certain way and you realize it's your assumptions playing out then you can catch yourself and maybe instead of assuming when you meet somebody and reacting to that assumption you can ask questions get to know someone spend some time really understanding where they're coming from um to see beyond the assumptions, because we all have gifts. We all have a lot to give and to learn from. Um, as I've sort of hopefully said in this particular episode, I've lived in many different societies and every single one of those has something beautiful, something unique, something that is special to them. And it's a gift to be a part of that. It's a gift to experience that. Um, and I've been very blessed in that way. And I suppose that's really it, really, is to look for the gift in people, to look for the uniqueness, the wonder that makes each one of us different, and to take the time to see beyond those assumptions to get to that. I hope you've enjoyed this. As usual, there's loads of um, links in the show notes to my online courses, um, a free one that I've created recently, the Seven Day Happiness Boost, um, links to my social media and links to my website should you want to contact me for coaching or team coaching or anything like that. Have a fabulous week. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.